we begin with a thanksgiving for baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word you claim us as daughters and sons making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord and unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, our defender, storms rage around us and within us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair. Deliver your sons and daughters from fear. And preserve us in the faith of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first lesson for this morning is taken from the book of Kings. At Horeb, the mount of God, Elijah came to a cave and he spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the, found, after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets. And I am the only one left, and they seek my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king over Aram, and also you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elijah, son of Shaphat, of Abdel Malola, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes the sword of Hazael, Yehu shall kill. Whoever escapes from the sword of Yehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading on this Sunday is from the Paul's letter to the church at Rome. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law. That the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the abyss? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord 
and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one, for one believes with the heart and is so justified, and one con confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. the gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus made the disciples get in the boat and go on ahead to the other side of the Sea of Galilee while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, I come to you today from my office beside a painting I received that lifts up and highlights one of my favorite gospel texts of Jesus calming the storm on the water, which of course you just heard. Last Sunday, I spoke about how that text about the feeding of the 5,000, along with this week's appointed text of Jesus walking on the water and calming the storm, are two of some of the more famous acts that Jesus does and his time here on this planet. I also spoke about how these actions by Christ can also be looked at through the lens of paradox. The idea of two opposing, seemingly different, and maybe even contradictory things are actually quite true in the irony of it all. 
I also mentioned when looking at these texts that I'm doing so through a text of writing I just came across from author Anne Lamont in terms of some of the attributes she lists of life's operating instructions that also point to the paradox of living and struggling and growing in a Christian faith. Well, today's lesson occurs immediately after the feeding of the 5,000 in Matthew. The disciples get on the boat and go toward the other side of the Sea of Galilee. After the crowds have been dismissed, and after they had eaten their fill. And once again, Jesus goes into solitude. This again, on the hills of finding out that John the Baptist had been murdered by King Herod. When it's then evening, he goes to find the disciples, and they are still out on the sea, in a boat, and now it is storming, and they are struggling. And so he comes to them, walking on the water. So if the storm wasn't enough to create a fear of capsizing, of trying to just survive and keep from drowning, along comes a figure walking on top of the waves. Needless to say, it was a terrifying experience, and it would be for anyone. Jesus, in seeing them, immediately tries to assuage their fears and says, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter, the outspoken one, wants a little bit more proof here. He says, If it is you, then let me come out on the water with you. And well, we know the rest of the story. Author Anne Lamont says an acronym for God is Gift of Desperation. G-O-D. Gift of Desperation. Or, she said, sometimes it's just me running out of any more good ideas. When I think of the story of Peter and him getting out of the boat, he finds that when he takes his eye off Jesus and begins to sink, that he was definitely running out of any more good ideas, and he was looking for a gift of desperation, a G-O-D God, and Jesus comes to him, reaches out to him, and saves him, and then calms a present storm in his life and in the storm of others on that Sea of Galilee. Well, 2020 has proven to be a calendar year that has been marked with desperation. Not only has the pandemic turned the world upside down in many ways, in fact, in so many ways that we probably do not even know all the ripple effects from this storm quite yet and the crashing of the waves of it, Because not only has COVID played havoc with every facet of life, people still have received news of a cancer diagnosis, of a loved one dying, a loss of job, another interview that did not go well, arguments and fights with family and friends, not to mention our country's fabric being seemingly ripped apart by racial and political issues. All these things still have occurred alongside this horrible virus. And it is enough, enough, that there are minutes, hours, days, and even weeks where it may feel like we are sinking, that we are looking for some type of gift of desperation, a G-O-D God, something, because we too are running out of good ideas that seemingly disguised our ultimate dependence on a force of nature that is bigger than we can control. It can get to us. Lamont also writes, however, that everyone is screwed up, broken, clinging, and scared, even the people who seem to have it the most together. In fact, she says, the ones who appear to have it together are the ones that are probably the most like us and that we should stop trying to compare our insides to other people's outsides, because most of the time, that's only going to make you feel worse. Let me rephrase that line again, because I think it's so profound. We should stop comparing the thinking that goes on inside of our brains with what we only see on the outside of other people's lives. 
Lamont tells a story of a time when her older brother was in fourth grade and he had a term paper due the next day that he hadn't even started. So her dad set him down with an Audubon book, paper and pencil and said to her brother, just take it bird by bird, buddy. Just read about the pelicans and then write about the pelicans in your own voice and then find out about the chickadees and tell us about the chickadees in your own voice and then go on to the next bird. So sometimes when we feel like the waves are crashing in, when we feel that we have even taken that leap of faith to try to walk on the water, but yet now it appears that we are sinking, maybe we can remember to take it bird by bird. Maybe for Peter, it would have simply meant turning back his attention from the winds raging around him and placing his focus once again on the one who had granted his request to get out of the boat. Maybe, even sometimes for us, it's getting back into the boat and letting God be God. There are things that can refill us again. There are waters that come to quench us and not drench us. There are moments of life when the presence of God can fill the vacuums of doubt, of fear, of the anxiety within us. It can even be to watch a rainstorm, to hear that thunder roll, and to see the rainbow, and watch life again move toward wholeness. Lamont also speaks about grace. She writes this, Grace is spiritual WD-40, or water wings, something that Peter could have used. The mystery of grace is that God loves Henry Kitchener and Vladimir Putin and me exactly as much as God loves your new grandchild. Go figure. The movement of grace is what changes us, heals us, and heals our world. To summon grace, say help, and then buckle up. Grace finds you exactly where you are, but it doesn't leave, it, leave you where it found you. And grace won't look like Casper the friendly ghost, regrettably. But the phone will ring, the mail will come, and then against all odds, you'll get your sense of humor about yourself back again. Laughter really is carbonated holiness. It helps us breathe again and again and gives us back to ourselves. And this gives us faith in life and faith in each other. And remember, grace always bats last. Well, Jesus will not always appear to us walking on a sea either. But the message of God's grace, exemplified in the empty tomb, reminds us indeed that God has the last word. That God can come in the beauty of the earth, but also in the midst of a storm when the waves are battering us and it feels like everything is sinking. God can encounter us and embody us in so many ways and in so many works and in so many actions and in so many words. Words that include things like grace, laughter, togetherness, healing, hope, love, peace, breath, repentance, renewal, restoration, and resurrection. May the peace of God bring calm to the storms that are raging behind you, raging around you, raging ahead of you, and raging within you. May God bring calm to the waves. Amen.
Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayers of intercession. Confident of your care and help by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. For your whole hurt church throughout the world, give courage in the midst of storms so that we see and hear Jesus calling, take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. May we follow Christ wherever he leads. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the well-being of your creation, protect waterways, forests, lands, and wildlife from exploitation and abuse. Help the human family endeavor to sustain and be sustained by the resources of your land. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the nations and their leaders, in you steadfast love and faithfulness meet, and righteousness and peace are found. May nations in conflict know the peace that is the fruit of justice and the justice that is the path to peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those in need, everyone who calls upon your name will be saved. C accompany all who are lonely. Hear the voices of those who cry out in anguish and support those who are frustrated in their search for an affordable place to live. We pray for those suffering this day, especially the many effects of COVID-19. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our congregation, though circumstances do not permit all of us to be gathered here today as your people, we thank you for community. We pray for students and teachers preparing for a new school year and for those struggling with unexpected hardship during this pandemic. Supply us generally, generously with your grace for our life together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, O God, for the saints, for the whole church, from all times and places, and for the saints in our lives and in our community, whom you have gathered to yourself. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.